Hello, in this short video, I will discuss a very important pulmonary emergence, emergency condition, tension pneumothorax. Well, it is one of the most important life-threatening pulmonary emergency which need to be diagnosed as quickly as possible clinically. So, let us start with a case-based scenario. I received in emergency a 48 years old male with respiratory distress after fall from height with chest trauma. And when I attached the monitors, in ECG, there was a sinus tachycardia. Blood pressure of the patient was 90 by 50. Pulse rate was 140 beats per minute and saturation was 81%. And patient was highly tachypneic, working a lot to take a breath. So, patient was highly tachypneic and this all was post-trauma. Now, in this patient, how do I approach any emergency condition, including this? First thing which we have to see whether the patient is conscious or not. So, my patient on examination was conscious. He was telling me he had a fall from height. Then, in a conscious patient, we start with primary assessment. In primary assessment, we go for A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. A for airway. So, I would see for the patency of the airway. So, my patient was talking with me. So, his airway was patent. Then I will see the breathing pattern. My patient was highly tachypneic and it was taking a lot of effort. He was having a lot of effort to take a breath. Right? And immediately in primary assessment, if you're, you, for, you, while you see the breathing pattern, you always have to auscultate, especially in the trauma patient. So, immediately when I auscultated and on auscultation, what I saw that patient had, uh, what I uh, heard was there was a unilateral decrease in air entry. Okay. So, something would come in my mind. SpO2 was showing 81%, 89% saturation. So, immediately I will attach to this patient a oxygen mask. Preferably, since patient was highly tachypneic and hypoxemic, I would attach non-rebreathing mask to this patient. Then I would see, go for the C, that is, I would see the circulation. Patient was having hypotension. So, immediately an IV line and fluid has to be started. Then D, the disability. Now, my patient was alert and responding. So, neurologically, patient was intact. And E, exposure. I will expose the patient and look for any visible sign of trauma, blood loss or anything. So, A, B, C, D, I did. So, what are the positive findings which I got? The positive finding was that patient had a progressive, uh, uh, let's say, tachypnea, hypoxia, hypotension, and he was, he had a unilateral decrease in air entry, and this was all post-trauma, right? So, what is the most probable diagnosis? The most probable diagnosis is pneumothorax, and that also may be tension pneumothorax. Why tension pneumothorax? Because patient was presenting with progressive hypoxia and hypotension, both. So, what is this pneumothorax and tension pneumothorax? Well, simple. Pneumothorax is collection of air in the pleural space between parietal and visceral pleura. And tension pneumothorax is a very important life-threatening variant of pneumothorax in which a one-way valve is created what happens because of this one-way valve created in the pleural space? Now, why does this pneumothorax first happens in a trauma patient? Well, this is a case of history of fall from height, blunt trauma, maybe rib fracture and rib got penetrated in one of the lung and then from the lung, the, the air passed into the pleura. Or penetrating trauma, a injury to the lung and air going into the pleural space. Now, in tension pneumothorax, what happens? A one-way valve is created during inspiration. The air from the lung escapes into the pleural space, but during expiration, the air does not escape out of the pleural space. So, with every breath, more and more, more and more, more and more air is collected in the pleural space. So, progressively in the pleural, the intrapleural pressure is increasing. Normally, the intrapleural pressure is negative and here, the intrapleural pressure is increasing, increasing, increasing and being very positive. 
this increased intrapleural pressure, what will it do? It not only produces respiratory compromise, but it also produces a cardiovascular compromise. What happens because of this increased air collection in the pleural space? The lung is getting get, and getting compressed, right? Because of this positive pressure in the in the chest, in the pleura, the lung is getting the same side lung is getting compressed, and this is pushing the mediastinum. This this uh, increased air collection is pushing the mediastinum to the other side. It is also causing increased pressure, compressing the heart also, right? So, mediastinum is pushed to other sides, so other lung can also be get affected. Heart is getting compressed, so filling of the heart is getting affected. And because of the lung tissue getting compressed, the air oxygen exchange is not happening, so progressive hypoxia. Plus, because of increased intrapleural pressure, patient is having a lot of effort to take a single breath. So, tachypnea is increasing, 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 right? So, let us see this tension pneumothorax, how does it affect the system as I already told you. Lung compressed, so progressive hypoxia. Heart compressed, so impaired cardiac feeling and hypotension. Positive increased intrathoracic pressure, so impaired venous return. All this cause a cardiopulmonary compromise to the patient, right? This tension pneumothorax is a clinical diagnosis. Once we have diagnosed it clinically, immediate management. Otherwise, patient can go into cardiac arrest, right? Impaired, the heart is not pumping the blood because of decreased venous return and let's say increased pressure on the heart. So, there would be no perfusion and patient will go into cardiac arrest. So, immediate management is must. So, we never have to wait for a x-ray or X anything. Radiological confirmation is not necessary. Clinical diagnosis is enough. But if I have a chance and I got a chest x-ray done, what will I see in the chest x-ray? What I will see in the chest x-ray? The site in which the there is a pneumo tension pneumothorax, the, that side lung markings will be absent and the lung tissue will be very much compressed as, as you can see in the left, hand, left side of the chest x-ray in my patient. Then because of this increased positive intrapleural pressure, the diaphragm is pushed lower, it is pushed downward, right? So, diaphragm is pushed downward and because of increased intrapleural pressure, the mediastinum is pushed to the other side, right? So, mediastinum is also pushed. So, I would get this typical kind of, of chest x-ray. But as I said, it is not a radiological diagnosis, it is a pure clinical diagnosis. Chest x-ray may take some time and this time we cannot waste, right? We have to immediately manage it. Now, there is one very important, uh, let's say, device which can aid in our diagnosis immediately and that is lung ultrasound. If I suspect pneumothorax or tension pneumothorax, definitely, immediately I can move a lung ultrasound to the patient and see the M mode, right? If I get this typical picture in the lung, M mode of the lung ultrasound, that is a barcode sign or stratosphere sign we call it. It is definitely a pneumothorax. Normally, we get a seashore sign in M mode, right? Right. But if I get this barcode sign, this is definitely a pneumothorax. And the sliding sign in also would be lost in 2D echocardiography of when we do the lung ultrasound. The sliding sign will be lost. So there would be no sliding sign. I would do, I would not see the sliding of the pleura with every breath. And if I take in M mode, I would get, get a typical barcode sign in lung ultrasound. Okay, so this is quick. We can get, we can do it. So once I have made the diagnosis of tension pneumothorax, immediately needle decompression. Immediate needle decompression we have to do, right? What is this needle decompression? We take a thick bone needle, 14 or 16 gauge, and in mid axillary line, <coughs> sorry, in mid clavicular line, not axillary, mid clavicular line, in second intercostal space, we pierce that needle, right? Your <coughs> Second intercostal space, one centimeter below the clavicle, right? So, in mid clavicular line, in the second intercostal space, I pierce the needle and open the hub of the needle to atmosphere. So, this is not management, this is emergency management. This is not treatment of tension pneumothorax. This is emergency management of tension pneumothorax. The treatment ultimately would be insertion of the chest tube, which we will do. But Immediate relief, to give immediate relief to the patient, we will do a needle decompression. That would be life-saving in this patient. 
you will see an immediate relief. Once you put the needle, you will see an immediate relief. The best space, the easiest space is your mid <coughs> clavicular line, second intercostal space. But we can also go in anterior axillary line, fourth, fifth intercostal space also, whatever is convenient. But we have to put a needle in the pleura and open that needle to the atmosphere. So the pleural pressure and the atmospheric pressure becomes equal and immediate the pressure on the mediastinal structure and the lung is relieved. You will see an immediate relief. So once the patient is relieved, we have to do the definitive management and the definitive management is insertion of chest tube. One very important thing which we have to be careful in these patients, that if in a trauma patient, I have a unilateral decrease in air entry, patient has a progressive tachy, uh, hypoxia and tachypnea and hypotension, the tension pneumothorax should always come in our mind and we should avoid positive pressure ventilation. We should never give positive pressure ventilation because it will further increase the intrapleural pressure by pushing more and more and more and more air into the pleura and more patient will deteriorate. So avoid positive pressure ventilation, right? The ultimate management is tube thoracotomy. So this is what is the management of tension pneumothorax, clinical diagnosis and management. So remember, Always suspect tension pneumothorax in patient with chest trauma if the patient is presenting with hypoxia, respiratory distress, <coughs> unilateral decrease in air entry, and shock. And what is the immediate management? The immediate management is needle decompression. What is the definitive management? Definitive management is insertion of chest tube. Right? So I hope now you will be able to diagnose tension pneumothorax quickly and <coughs> prevent your patient from going into cardiac arrest. Thank you.